plot thickens. The new program that gives you a chance to match wits with a real detective. We have our professional here, Mr. Richard Halley, who owns his own detective agency in Hollywood. Our three amateur detectives are Mr. Stan Ross, an advertising executive from Coney Island, the lovely and talented Miss Jan Sterling, and the one, the only, Groucho Marx. Take this female out and find her a mate. <laughs> and get me one too while you're out. <laughs> this is our mascot, Lucifer. And I'm the district attorney, Jack Linkletter. Thank you. And this is my mascot. This is the bailiff, Warren Ott, and believe it or not, she's supposed to keep order in court. That's going to be a chore. Warren, could you put Lucifer down on her pillow so she doesn't steal the show? We've all patted her for good luck. As any cat will tell you, this is a mystery program, but it's also a game. We're going to show a 10-minute mystery film, and then the actual suspects that you see in the film will sit on the witness stand, and our detectives will give them the third degree before they decide which one is the criminal. Now, each one of you detectives who correctly names the killer, you will win $500 in cash. And in just a moment, I'll explain how some of you may win $1,000. You see, already the plot thickens. Now, before we see the mystery film panel, let me tell you how you can win double $500 or what Maureen has here, $1,000. Now, what you do, if any one of you correctly identifies who the murderer is, and Mr. Halley, our professional down there on the end, doesn't pick the guilty party, then you win $1,000. That's kind of a little extra reward, a tidbit there, because you'll be beating a man at his own game. Now, Bailiff, if you will wheel out this monitor so that the panel can see it very clearly, all you have to do is decide who is the murderer, just keep your eyes on the TV screen, and you amateur detectives at home, see if you can guess who done it, as the plot thickens. Time, 4 p.m. Place, the spider's parlor. This spider is named Kazam. At least that's what he tells the flies who visit him and become tangled in his web of fake crystal gazing and phony seances. Three things aid him in his racket. Lois, his wife, Arnold, his assistant, and the fact that he has a heart as cold and hard as that crystal ball. Why so quiet, honey? I'm thinking. Well, what's the matter? Don't tell me you see something in the crystal ball. <laughs> yeah, I see something. Trouble. We've been working our pitch too long here. Oh, but honey, we're doing great. I know, baby. But it's time we blow this town. You and I are going to go on a vacation. Vacation? What happens to me? Sorry, Arnold. On the second honeymoon, I don't need any assistance. <laughs> well, look, we'll be back in a couple of months. When we do, we'll pick up again. I'm not trying to give you the brush. You're still the best shill in the business. All right. But before you take off, what about my split? <laughs> <laughs> sure, Arnold. Right away. Well, wow. talk about money going to a guy's head. <laughs> Safest place in the world. Here it is, $36,000. Your split is one-third, 12000 Thank you. Well, aren't you going to count it? What for? I trust both of you. <laughs> a boy, Arnold. The rest is ours, baby. Plus two tickets to Mexico City. We leave tonight. Tonight? Well, honey, I have to pack. Watch the pack. I'll buy you a whole new op in Acapulco. Aren't you forgetting something? Didn't you set up a seance with a couple of regulars, Collins, Rysdale? So phone and cancel. Well, what about Mr. Lowe? You've been trying to land him all month. Suppose he decides to come tonight. Carlton Lowe? Ah, he won't show. Maybe he will. Now, you told me yourself that's three, four grand. If you can materialize his daughter for him. Oh, honey, that's an awful lot of money for just one night's work. No, no, I'm not taking any more chances. I think it's time to cut out of here right away. But, honey... Look, I... no more arguments. Cancel everything for tonight. There goes a fast $4,000. Don't worry. I'll handle him. 5 p.m. 
the office of Roy Nesbitt, attorney at law. His client, Selina Risedale. Quite a mouthful, and she's quite a handful, too, as Nesbitt is beginning to discover. Superstitious, that's the whole trouble. You're superstitious. And you're very impertinent, Mr. Nesbitt. For the last time, I'm asking you to leave me alone. But I don't want to leave you alone, Selina. It isn't just protecting your investments. I want to protect you. If you'd only let me help you. I have all the help I need, thank you. Kazam... That's charlatan. I warn you, not another word. Kazam is a very great psychic counselor. Great psychic swindler, if you ask me. I've got a whole drawer full of these things. Canceled checks, thousands of dollars that you've donated to his phony schemes, just thrown away. Thrown away? You seem to forget that Kazam was able to contact my late husband. You don't believe that, do you? Somebody mumbling in the dark through a trumpet? Anyone attending a seance with an open mind could prove to you that it's all a fake. Now, that's just enough. It may interest you to know that I'm seeing Kazam again tonight. And it wouldn't surprise me a bit if he advised me to get another attorney. Penfield speaking. She's going there again tonight. I don't think we can hold up our plans any longer. All right. I'll get over to Kazan's right away. Martha Collins was paralyzed in an accident three years ago. Her brother, Sid, took over the household affairs. Today, at 7 p.m., Martha discovered something else that Sid had taken over. All right, Sid. What's the meaning of this? I told you not to open my strong box. Those papers are private. Business, see? Business? Taking father's insurance money and squandering it on a lot of worthless mining stock? You don't understand. It isn't worthless. Kazam says we're going to make millions. You miserable creature. A job isn't good enough for you, is it? You'd rather fall for a get-rich-quick scheme like this. I'd like to get my hands on that phony mystic. He's not a phony. He's my friend. He wants to help us. I'm going to see him tonight. Here. You take that with you tonight. You tell Kazan you want your money back. You can't boss me around. I make my own decisions. You mean that phony makes them for you? You think I'm just going to sit here and watch my life go down the drain? What else can you do? Good night, sister dear. All day long, Carlton Lowe sat in his penthouse apartment trying to make up his mind. Ever since the sudden, tragic death of his teenage daughter, he debated the possibility of making contact with her spirit. Now, tonight, at 7.30, he came to a decision. He called Kazan. That's right. It has to be tonight. Yes, I'll bring the money. In cash. But I don't like to carry such an amount with me. Very well, if you insist. But I must be sure. You understand quite sure. If there's any sign of trickery... All right, nine o'clock. Seated. The seance has begun. Kazam, I Quiet. Must... Do not disturb the trance. Please. Join hands. Do not break the circle. Whatever happens here, I must warn you. Do not leave the table. Keep your hands joined. Look into the crystal.
Field. I'm a private investigator. Mrs. Rysdale's lawyer hired me to keep an eye on her. Y you were in that cabinet all the time? Long enough to figure out you couldn't have killed Kazam. No, Mrs. Rysdale either. Well, how do you know that? Because I watched the hands on the table. Neither Sid nor Mrs. Rysdale ever got their hands free during the seance. But Kazam's dead all right. Martha, you fired at him, but did you hit him? Lo, you had a gun in your hand. Lois, you had the opportunity, and so, Arnold, did you. Any one of you could be the murderer. All right. The crystal ball guards its secrets well. Now, who done it? And how? And why? Well, the evidence is all in, and in just a minute, detectives, you can question the suspects. And while you're marshalling your thoughts, Here's a thought worth marshalling. Here now are the four murder suspects in person. First, there's Lowe. Remember, he carried a revolver. Next, Lois, the wife who wanted Kazam to hold one last seance. And then Arnold, the assistant to the victim. And finally, Martha, who took a shot at Kazam. Now, in our game, there's a very important rule, and that is that only the guilty may lie. The innocent suspects must tell the truth. The other characters in the film have all been cleared by Penfield, who, by the way, is not the murderer, because he's really a private eye. So you can forget about Sid, you can forget about Mrs. Rysdale, but remember, it has to be one of these four suspects here on stage. So right now, let us start uh, questioning with our professional, Mr. Dick Halley. I want you to look at these suspects, ask any of them questions as you may wish. Thank you, Jack. Mr. Lowe, what time did you arrive at the seance? At 9 o'clock. At 9 o'clock? How much money did you carry with you at the time? $4,000. All in cash? Yes, sir. What caliber gun do you have? A 38. 38? Yes, sir. All right. Now, let's see. Uh, Lois. Uh, you were married to the mystic? Yes. And uh, why, besides the, the fact that there might have been more money made that particular evening, did you not want to leave the city at that time? Was there another reason? No, that was the only reason. That was the only reason, the money? Yes. And you, Arnold, did you have another reason for uh, not wanting to leave the city besides the money? No other reason. We had a good deal gone. Huh? And uh, Martha, are, are you actually crippled or is this a pose? It isn't a pose, or at least it wasn't. I had a very serious accident about three years ago. My both legs were paralyzed. The doctor said I would never walk again, but I wouldn't settle for that, so I began exercising, unbeknownst to anyone else. Mm -hmm. Took me over two years, well over two years, to regain the strength of my limbs, and now I walk without any difficulty. Thank you. All right, thank you, uh, Mr. Halley. Now, Stan Ross, the advertising executive. Would you like to question the panel? Yes, Mr. Lowe, uh, why did you bring a gun to the seance? Did you anticipate trouble of some sort? Oh, no. I carried a large amount of money. 
That's why you carry the gun? I always carry a gun when I carry a large amount of money. I see, all right. Uh, Martha, did you come to the seance intending to kill Mr. Uh, Kazam? Yes, I did. You did? Are you normally a good shot? Oh, an excellent shot. You are? Oh, yes, in college I was the champion. As a matter of fact, no one ever exceeded or excelled my record. Wonderful. Have you ever been a half shot? <laughs> Continue, Mr. Ross. Arnold, uh, <laughs> the, uh, was there anything between you and Lois other than the normal business relationship? Absolutely nothing. You're getting a little chummy there, it seemed to me, and uh, looked like there was something more. But you say, Lois, that you were married to the deceased. Of course I was married to her. And business had been good. Where did you intend to go after you blew this town? To Mexico. All right, let's move on to Jan Sterling. Jan? Um, Lois, uh, have you had any feeling besides just a business feeling for Arnold? Absolutely none. Uh, Arnold, uh, did you talk at any time during the evening on the phone between uh, uh, 7 o'clock and the time the, uh, the time the man was shot? Talk on the phone? Yes. No, I did not. You did not. Um, Martha... Uh, had you uh, ever met or talked to Mr. Kazan before? No, never. Okay, Jan. Groucho? Mr. Lowe? Why did you carry this money in cash? Why oh. didn't you have traveler's checks? Or... <laughs> don't you belong to the diners club? <laughs> well, I don't understand you're joking about this. Yeah, I think that's a little irrelevant I, there, Groucho. No, it's a little elephant, yes, but it's <laughs> irrelevant. Oh, I don't hear very well. You'll have to talk louder. Lois, what are you doing later? <laughs> Groucho, you're, you're supposed to tell me who the murderer is. Oh, well, I'm trying to find out through well, Lois. Well, you're getting a date with Lois. That's... Well, then we were going to go to Mexico. <laughs> Would you be interested in going to Mexico with me, Lois? No, I wouldn't. I don't appeal to you, is that it? No, you don't. I don't, huh? No. You're very frank, anyhow. Is that your first name, Frank Lois? <laughs> Arnold, what about your first name? Is it Benedict? No, it is not. What is it? Arnold. And your last name is Arnold, too? Arnold Arnold? Arnold Martin. Martin, huh? Yes. Is that your real name, or is that uh, non diploma? That's not real wear in your hat when you go out on a party. <laughs> Groucho, I'm going to have to sick the bailiff on you if you don't keep to the, you know, the subject. Is this matter. the bailiff? <laughs> oh, I knew I was going to have that problem. Yes, but she's a strong bailiff. Yeah. Well, I can overpower in a long fight. <laughs> Martha, what are you doing later? <laughs> All right, let, let us stop for just one moment. Uh, it's the only two chances I have out there. <laughs> Let us now have some general questioning. Anybody can ask a okay. question. First, raise your hand. I'll recognize you. You can question anybody at will. Anybody have any questions? Stan Ross. Yeah, Mr. Lowe, um, have you been going to Mr. Kazam many, many times previously? No, it's my first time. This was your first time? Yes. Absolutely, all right. Any other questions? Good Jan Martha. Sterling. Uh, Mr. Lowe, did uh, Mr. Kazam uh, greet you as you came into the seance? Did you have any conversation with him? Oh, no. None at all. No, he was already Mr. in a trance when you arrived, is that it? Yes. Uh-huh. Uh, Lois, uh, when was the last time you talked to your husband? Oh, about um, five minutes before the seance began, I believe. Well, what time exactly was that? That was about 20 minutes to nine. 20 minutes to nine? Yes. Well, I thought that the, uh, Mr. Lowe had gotten there earlier at uh, 7.30. No, he called at 7.30. No, Mr. Lowe arrived, at, arrived at 9, 9 o'clock. Precisely at 9. at 9. Okay, Groucho, did you have a question? Yes, I did. Lois, why did you want to marry a man with a beard <laughs> and reject me? <laughs> Arnold, are you in love with Lois? No, I'm not. How do you know? Have you asked her? <laughs> You look pretty shifty to me. It was a, purely a business deal. That's all it was. Well, we all most, most love is a business deal. <laughs> is Mr. Halley satisfied with what he heard? The only question I might ask is uh, if Lois happens to know how 
uh, her husband was killed with what kind of weapon? Oh, he was shot, wasn't he? Looked like a knife to me. Didn't took, it to you? Took poison. Now, 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 no in-panel discussion Why here. not? Well, because this is each one of what you. What are you doing later? <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, Mr. D.A., but the time is up. The well, way you say that, I'm not sorry. <laughs> no time is up. Thank you, Bailiff. And now, detectives, for $500, write down the name of the suspect that you think is the killer. Remember, it may mean $1,000 to you three amateurs if Mr. Halley down there doesn't peg the guilty party. And while they're writing down their choices, here's something for you folks at home to take note of. who our detectives think is the real murder. Let's begin with Mr. Halley. He's the professional, and on his guess, he's going to hang the judgment of whether these other panelists, if they get it right, will get $500 or $1,000. Mr. Halley, who done it? I think Arnold is the murderer. Arnold? Why? Yes. Well, first of all, he had opportunity, and I think he had the two strongest motives for murder, sex and money. Now, wait a minute. Let's I've analyze those things. But wh when was his opportunity? Well, obviously, he was in the uh, mystic's parlor. Uh, further than that... As a rule, there's not much sex in a parlor. <laughs> <laughs> in a mystic's parlor. <laughs> and, and what were his motives? That hasn't been my experience, Money. huh? You see, the, the mystic wanted to leave that night without uh, taking in that other $4,000. Further, I think he probably wanted to take the mystic's place, both in a business sense and otherwise. Very interesting. No, I had a good deal. I told you that before. All right. That, that's interesting to hear the professional. All right, Stan Ross, you're matching wits against him. Who do you think did it? Well, after listening to uh, Mr. Halley, I'm inclined to agree with him, but I did not put that on my card. No, you uh, didn't card. put that No, I chose, I chose Mr. Lowe for a number of reasons. First of all, I think the mystic was dead before, before the he was shot. Yes. Well, that, that other shot missed, and it was from the side, and he, he was, was shot, shot in the back. I don't know where you studied to be a detective. Uh, Maybe you took a correspondence course that you picked me. I think you were guilty from... <laughs> you're guilty from three movies back. <laughs> that's, that's, that's beautiful. Yes, Shirley. Well, I picked Arnold. I felt that Arnold had uh, killed the mystic and had imitated his voice on the phone, and that when Mr. Lowe arrived, the mystic was already in the trance, and, um, uh, you know, no one else knew anything about it. I thought that Martha, just unfortunately, shot very well, but uh, the fellow was already dead. And it looked to me as though he'd been knifed. I didn't think that looked... You no mean, bullet hole I'd ever seen looks like that. Huh? Yeah, you mean it was a big, a big wound. Yes, it looked to me but like a knife hear, wound. Didn't you hear a shot? Yes, but I don't think that shot killed him. Well, why did they shoot it then? To fool us. Well, they didn't fool me. <laughs> All right, Groucho, if they didn't fool you, who do you think did it? I think that Lois actually did it. Why? She did it to get the money and run away with Arnold. And I wish it had been me. I know she must be a liar because she said she didn't like me. <laughs> but you do really think she's the murderer? No, actually, I think Martha did it because nobody's accused her of being the murderer. That's not what you wrote on your card. <laughs> no, it isn't, but I'm a pathological liar. <laughs> No, who did you... Who did Lois, you? would you mind pulling your skate down? It's very distracting. <laughs> with legs like that, I don't care if you were the murderer. Well, Groucho, I would be in Veracruz with you in no time. <laughs> is that in Mexico? Yes. Yeah, Good. yeah. Well, she's, got, she's got the tickets, too, you know. Uh, she's got she's the got tickets. She's got, tickets. tickets. she's got more than the tickets, kid. Just look at her. <laughs> You wrote down Lois on your card. I wrote down Lois. And I'm going to hold you to that. Yes, well, I wish Lois would hold me instead of you. Huh? All right, very interesting. You see, I know who did it. I you picked did? the killer right after I saw the end of this film, which you're going to see right now, the end of the mystery. I want to ask you one question. Is there actually any money in those bags? You'll see. Well, you've answered me already. All right, roll them. That's what they say in the movie industry. <laughs> Well, everyone's telling the truth. Lowe here never fired a shot. Arnold was busy manipulating that rod to produce a phony ghost. Lois was imitating a girl's voice, working a trumpet. And you, Martha, you did fire a shot. And you did hit Kazam. But you didn't kill him.
Well, what do you mean? There's a bullet hole. That bullet didn't kill Kazam. He was dead before Martha fired that shot. Well, how could that be? He was killed before the seance started. I saw Lois and Arnold drag Kazam's body into this room, prop it up, and turn out the lights. By the time the rest of you arrived, it looked like the seance had already started. Arnold told everyone Kazam was in a trance. And in the dark, he did the moaning. And if Martha hadn't interrupted, you all would have gone out of here thinking Kazam was still in a trance. Actually, Lois had killed him an hour beforehand. That's not true. I was in that cabinet before the seance began. She and Arnold had been meeting behind Kazam's back. And when Kazam decided to leave town, she wanted to get hold of all of his money. So she waited for a chance and stabbed him in the back with a table knife. Here's the wound. When a man is shot in the side of the head, he doesn't bleed between the shoulder blades. And she stole the rest of his money from his hiding place inside of his turban. She was all set to take off for Mexico. Then the phone rang. And it was low, asking for a seance. And she just couldn't resist that extra $4,000. So she took one last long chance, holding a seance in a darkened room with a dead man. All right. But you've got to believe that Arnold had nothing to do with the killing. He didn't even know until Kazam was dead. And then he... He helped me stage the seance. It's the only way. Thank you. I wasn't sure of that till now. I wouldn't have been very safe in Mexico with Lois, would I? <laughs> Lois, you naughty, naughty murderer. Ah, you caught me. Yeah, I caught you. Why don't you use a steak knife, Lois? <laughs> Well, so you're a table knife. I'm psyche. I happen to be a brilliant detective. Well, he's not madly in love with Lois. So give me the money. Well, I'm in good company, aren't I? A thousand dollars. You get a thousand dollars, Groucho, because Mr. Halley, the professional, didn't get the right murder. Can I make a deal with you? Can I have the bailiff instead of the thousand dollars? Congratulations, Groucho, to you, and we have three losers. I think I'll take Mr. Lowe's suggestion. You shouldn't go out of here with nothing. We'll give you a $100 scholarship at the Acme all night drive-in detective school. And you can use it. We'll see our two regulars, Mr. Halley and Groucho Marx, next week. And our guests will include a surprise celebrity guest and someone picked from our studio audience. So thank you, suspects, you insidious crooks, you. Fun. And uh, you too, Jan Sterling and Stan Ross. And to our mascot, Lucifer. Thank you. Ah! Goodbye until next week when... The plot thickens.